Today during science, we're going to continue reading our Structures of Life Boss Science textbook. I'm going to go to the page turner and turn to page 34. On page 34, we started learning about crayfish. The different parts of the crayfish. How crayfish move and how they get food and how crayfish protect themselves using their exoskeleton. We're going to continue learning about crayfish, and here we're going to find out how crayfish raise offspring. Offspring are their babies. If you take a look at this picture, you see this mommy crayfish holding her babies under her tail. Those are the crayfish eggs. Let's listen. How do crayfish raise offspring? Crayfish start life as an egg. After a male and female crayfish mate, the female lays eggs. However, she doesn't lay them in a nest or under a plant or rock. She carries them under her tail. The long feather-like swimmerets hold the eggs in fan water around them. She can have a hundred eggs or more under her tail. Wow, that's really impressive. Could you imagine holding a hundred eggs? The eggs start to hatch in four to six weeks. The babies are only as long as the letter L on this page, and they are hard to see because they are transparent. After they hatch, the babies stay under their mother's tail for protection. In a few days, they start to walk around on the gravel. But if they are startled, they scoot back under their mother's tail as quick as a flash. So you know how kangaroos stay in their mother's pouch? It seems like the baby crayfish stay in their mother's tail so that they can stay safe. When the baby crayfish are about two weeks old, they leave the protection of their mother's tail. They are ready to start life on their own. When the offspring are four to six months old, they can mate and produce offspring. So after about two weeks, they no longer need to stay with their mothers and they can go off on their own. This is a blue crayfish that's just molted. That means it's grown bigger. So the old shell is right here, and it grows a new shell because the old shell got too tight. How do crayfish grow? Crayfish are completely covered by a hard shell. The shell cannot grow. So how does a crayfish that is less than one centimeter cm long get to be 10 centimeters long. The crayfish molts. During molting, the shell splits between the carapace and the tail. Then, with a couple of flips and shakes, the crayfish slides out of its old shell. The crayfish comes out with its new shell already on, but it is soft and flexible. This is when the crayfish grows. Within minutes, it expands. The crayfish is much larger than it was before it molted. It is important for the freshly molted crayfish to stay hidden. It cannot defend itself or find food when its shell is soft. In two days, the shell will once again be hard and strong. So as the crayfish gets bigger, its shell doesn't grow, so it needs to throw off its old shell, and it has a new shell underneath. The new shell is still a little bit soft, so it needs to hide for about two days. After two days, the new shell is hard, and then it can move around again. A crayfish will molt six to eight times during its life. It may molt five times in the first two months of life. This is when the crayfish is growing fastest. After its first year, it will molt less often because it is not growing as fast. Ooh, here's a crayfish that's in an aquarium in a classroom. Classroom crayfish. Crayfish are easy to keep in the classroom. All they need is clean, cool water, food to eat, and a place to hide. By observing closely, you can see how they use their antennae to sense their environment. Do you think we could keep a crayfish in our classroom? You can see how they use their pincers to defend themselves and to get food. You might be able to see the several mouth parts working as they eat. And you might see them using the small pincers on their walking legs to clean their antennae. 
you can learn a lot about how their structures and behaviors help crayfish survive and grow in their aquatic environment. Here's another crayfish. Being environmentally responsible. Crayfish are wonderful organisms to study in the classroom, but they can cause problems if they are released into local outdoor environments. The rule is that you never release classroom crayfish or any other organism into natural areas. And if you collect native crayfish from local ponds, you should return them to exactly the same pond and not move them to another body of water. Why do you think this is important? If we had a classroom crayfish that hatched from an egg, why do you think it's important not to let it out into a pond by our school? Why is this important? There are about 380 different species or kinds of crayfish in North America, more than on any other continent. Each kind of crayfish lives in a particular freshwater environment. When an organism is found naturally in an area, it is native to that region. The classroom crayfish may not be native to your region. If an organism isn't naturally found in an area, it is non-native to that area. So there are so, different, so many different kinds of crayfish, we don't want to mix them. So if we got a classroom crayfish and it wasn't from our area and we let it out, it might do something that's bad to the crayfish that's already here. Here's a blue crayfish. Sometimes, people introduce non-native organisms to an area, either intentionally or by accident. Non-native crayfish used as fishing bait, pets, or science projects should never be released. The introduced crayfish can cause problems by eating the native plants and competing with native animals for food and shelter. So if we just dropped a crayfish into a pond near our school, that crayfish might eat all the animals that are already there. That would cause a problem. Introduced crayfish can eat native animals, including insects, snails, tadpoles, frogs, baby turtles, fish eggs, fish, and snakes. And if there are native crayfish, the non-native species may endanger the native species. Over time, the local crayfish might be entirely replaced by the introduced species. If an introduced organism thrives in a new area and causes problems, it is called an invasive organism. Invasive organisms are changing ecosystems all over the United States. It is important to know how invasive species are introduced and how to prevent their spread. So remember to do your part to protect your local environment. Never release classroom organisms into local areas. So, based on the information that you learned about crayfish today, in your seesaw, tell me something you learned about crayfish.